Hello everyone, my name is Michael Farinacci. My talk is about writing microservice tests and a software engineer at WeWork. So, what are we going to cover? We're going to talk about what are microservices, how do you effectively test microservices at the component level and what that means, and how, do you, how can you use Go and why you should use Go to test microservices. Okay, so microservices are an it's an architectural style. There's no formal definition for it that I could find. Uh, a collection of loosely based, uh, a collection of loosely coupled services. They usually communicate over a network. They're independently deployable, testable, uh, and maintainable. And it could be like multiple teams working on them together uh, concurrently on different parts of a whole system. So how do you test microservices? This is a testing pyramid that a lot of people have already seen. Uh, at the bottom, we have unit tests, uh, function level, uh, interface tests, essentially. Uh, in the middle, we have integration tests, which is what I'll be focusing on. And at the top, we have end-to-end -end tests. End-to-end -end tests are what a lot of people typically do when they have a microservice like uh, deployment. They'll test at like, the end-to-end, -end, but what they really should be doing is testing at the integration level. So, when you test at the end-to-end -end level, instead of the unit level, your tests are going to be slower, they're going to be more costly, and you're not going to be able to cover as much. But there's less isolation, so you cover more of the overall system. Um, so you get more coverage, but then again, there's, like, there's a middle ground approach here, which is the integration level, which is what I think you should be testing uh, in, the, uh, in the beginning. Okay, so if you only focus on unit tests and you have no integration tests or end-to-end -end tests, you'll essentially end up with uh, this type of a situation where your components work, but they don't work well together. <laughs> okay. All right, so to illustrate this point and what you should be doing, I came up with this example where I have three uh, services and a test service. Uh, the test service is the test driver. The test driver is the client for the account service and it's responsible for running all of the tests. The account service manages accounts. It's pretty much like a profile service, uh, stores credit card information, uh, contact info, addresses, etc. cetera. Um, and it makes calls to downstream services, such as the payment processor, which could be a third party interface over Stripe or PayPal. It essentially processes payments. The billing service is a service that's uh, managing like a data store for invoices, like all of the bills that all of the customers have essentially. So we'll use this in the end-to-end -end example and the integration example. So for the end-to-end -end test example, we start by making a uh, request to pay an invoice. That's what we want to do. So the account service receives this request from the test driver. It makes a request to the payment processor to pay an invoice. Uh, if that's successful, then we'll get the make payment response that's a positive. And then it will go and try to make a request to the billing service to mark the invoice as paid. And if that's successful, then we'll get the response that's positive and we'll end up relaying that back to the pay invoice response and that will be sent back to the test driver and we have a positive test case and everything works. But there are some problems with this. We only care about the account service, so we really want to make sure that this uh, account service works in both positive and negative test cases. And there's some other issues as well, such as maybe we don't want to have the payment processor and the billing processor like up all the time. Like those services aren't necessary for validating the account service as like actually doing its job. So we can only test from the account client's perspective with end-to-end. -end. It's not possible to run negative test cases for failed requests between accounts and payments and accounts and billing. And all services need to be up, as I mentioned. And we can't run as many tests because these tests are slow. We don't know how long it's going to take to like, process a payment uh, to the credit, for a credit card payment or how long it's going to take to update the uh, invoice on the DB to mark it as paid. So let's try to adapt this uh, testing strategy for an integration test, essentially. So this is what we have. Let's actually test the communication between the test driver and the account service 
and the payment processor service and the billing service by essentially making them API contracts. And you can do that by using like OpenAPI or gRPC. In my example, I'm going to use gRPC. And let's make the downstream services mocks. So Go in this situation helps because we can essentially use the simple concurrency primitives in Go and uh, essentially move the mocks that I just showed you into the test service itself. And we can run them as Go routines on a separate port and or separate ports, and we can communicate to them via um, empty interface channels, so we can pass any type to them. And how does gRPC help? We have a well-defined contract here. This is essentially um, the behavior we're trying to validate, that this contract is met over like a certain time, essentially. It's, if we're testing this integration and how uh, these services interact with this type of a contract, it becomes possible to test at the integration level, and we also generate the server and the client code, and taking it a step further, we can also generate the mocks as well. Okay, so let's turn it into an integration example. We have the test driver. We put the mocks as Go routines, and it's still one service, one application. And now we have uh, uh, Go channels to communicate to the mocks and gRPC connections to essentially interact with the account service through the mocks and uh, through the test server client. Okay, so the workflow for this example is um, the test driver programs the um, payment processor uh, through the channel, the response that it's going to give to the account service request. The test driver makes the same pay invoice request to the account service. The account service then um, makes a uh, make payment request to the mock payment processor the mock payment processor takes the make, uh, make payment response that we program through the channel and sends that back to the account service. The account service then responds uh, to the pay invoice request with the pay invoice response. And in this case, it's a negative test because we passed in a negative um, uh, response for the uh, mock payment processor. And then we validate that the only request that we got was the request from the account service to the mock payment processor it's not going to make a request to the mock billing service because it didn't actually succeed. Okay, so let's look at source code and how this works. So I have this uh, project set up that you guys can look at later. Essentially, we have um, an API directory. The API directory has all the gRPC stuff, has the proto files, and it has the, uh, the mocks and um, the regular handlers that you would use for the gRPC services. Uh, package just has like a, a mock package, which I use as a helper method to pull um, and push onto the uh, channels. And then I have a services repo, that's the real gRPC services that I deployed in the end-to-end uh, -end situation. And we have uh, the test directory, which has the, um, oh, sorry, should have went through. Yeah, the, the test directory, which has the end-to-end um, -end test driver and the integration test driver. Okay, so let's look at the, um, the source code for the end-to-end -end test. Essentially, all we do is set up a connection to the um, account service, and this is what we'll use for all of the test cases that we run through. Uh, it's pretty standard. This is what you do for um, any gRPC connection. Uh, it's just an initialization. The integration test source is pretty similar, but the only difference is on line 39 to 44, we're now initializing um, an empty interface channel and passing that to the new mock server Go routine that we're establishing, and we're running it on a uh, separate port than we did for the uh, um, test driver, uh, or the account service. It's, we run it on the same port that the real service was essentially running on, um, and it's just what we're receiving uh, the account service now. Okay, so the, the example for end-to-end, -end, I'll bring this back up. This is um, the workflow that you saw for the end-to-end um, uh, -end example. So in this case, all we really need to worry about is the uh, one and six, these requests, because that's the requ uh, pay invoice request and pay invoice response. And that's what we're testing here. We essentially make the request to the account service, and then we validate that the response occurred correctly. And that's essentially all we can do in this perspective, which is why we want to actually change this and do an integration test where we can force the negative situations, or maybe there's a timeout or the um, 
negative uh, data is received, essentially. Okay, so this is what I showed you as well. The, payment, uh, the uh, integration example, uh, it's a little bit more complicated, but not too much different. So the only difference here is we now need to um, uh, create the, uh, the struts that we're going to be passing as a response from the um, uh, billing and payment services. So we essentially push those onto the billing channel and the payments channel, which we pass to the mock services that we start in the Go routine. And we make the exact same request that we made in the end-to-end, -end, so I'll take that out so we can focus on the other difference here, which is after we do the validation of the, um, the test driver to the account service request, we're now going to validate the mock responses as well, or the request that the account service made to the mocks. So in this situation, we're going to see if there is a response, so we check to see if we, when we pull off the, um, the channel, if it's nil. I, the helper function returns nil if there's no request that was made to the, uh, the mock service. And we validate that it's the correct type as well. And we can also validate if the response has the correct uh, invoice. So on line 78, I added one extra example where we're validating that the uh, ID that we're trying to pay, the invoice ID, is one which I passed in to the request. And that's um, uh, essentially trying to validate we're not paying the wrong invoice when we receive a successful payment. Um, line 73 is essentially checking to make sure that uh, there was a, um, there was a, 70, line 70 is checking to make sure that there was a request and then line 73 is validating that it's the correct type. You can validate much more, I'm just keeping this simple so that we have um, just illustrating the concept. Okay, so the method that you saw, the get interface, this is essentially just pulling off the channel and returning nil if uh, there's nothing there. And we can do that because it's a synchronous example. So uh, we can assume that there has to be a response from the uh, account service. And if it didn't make it, then it's never going to make it by the time the account service responds to the client, the test client. So it'd be slightly different if it was asynchronous, but you can still, you can still make it work. Okay, so this is the real benefit here is we can do negative tests. So in this situation, we're going to put an uh, error on the channel. So the payments, um, payment service is not going to succeed. And that's going to prevent us from updating the invoice. Um, so that's on line 94. On line 97, we are doing the same uh, request from the test driver to the account service, except this time we expect an error back we don't expect the account service to actually succeed. And on line 109, we're validating the same way we did with the positive test case. We're validating that there was a uh, request that was made to the account service, and we're validating that's the correct type. And then on line uh, 120, we're validating that uh, there was no request made to the billing service because it didn't successfully process the payment, so now we don't want to uh, uh, try to pay or mark any invoice as paid. Okay, so the mock payments server source, it's worth looking at, but you should also realize that this could be auto-generated, so it could be out of scope for testing. This is not something you're going to have to write yourself. Um, if you use gRPC or OpenAPI or some other proto-definition, then you don't actually have to write this type of code. But let's look at it just because it could be interesting and you can see how it's working. So what we do is uh, there's one method for new mock server. That's uh, essentially what we register to the gRPC uh, endpoint. And we just register the, um, uh, the mock endpoints instead of the real endpoints to the gRPC server. Um, the mock server has an empty interface channel. It's just what we're using to um, receive the... Uh, responses that we're going to send to the account service from the test driver, and it's the channel we're going to pass back the request that we receive from the account service back to the test driver as well. And this is essentially what's happening on line 42. That's the make payment uh, endpoint that we're implementing f that gRPC generates. Um, we essentially pull off the channel the response that we're going to give to the account service. Then we um, check to make sure that it's... Uh, actually there and it's the correct type, then we um, uh, take the request that we receive from the make uh, payment parameter um, 
that's, this is essentially a real gRPC service we're running as a Go routine. So we take the request from the account service and then we put that back on the channel. And that's pretty much all that's going on here. And as I said before, this could be auto-generated. Okay, so the takeaways. Um, you can use gRPC or OpenAPI to define the contracts. And if you do that, you can auto-generate this, um, the, the mock instances essentially. Uh, you can test the API contracts instead of only running end-to-end -end tests. And you can use channels to communicate uh, with mock server go, uh, go routines as well. So all the code here is um, online on GitHub. You can clone this, uh, check it out, and ask questions or uh, uh, make a PR. It's up. Everything's okay with that. All right, that's all. Okay, so that's a good one. Uh, if we mock, I can read up for you. Okay, go ahead. Uh, just do the uh, first one's okay. Okay, so the first question is: If we mock payment for testing account, what happens when there's breaking change in payment? Who's responsible to modify the mock? Okay. Okay, so the generated mocks you can check those into like a test package for each service. So um, let's say something happens with the uh, payment processor. It'd be responsible for the payment processor for updating that. Like you would essentially um, generate the mock when you generate your proto and then check that in. Um, theoretically, if uh, the, uh, the mock gets checked in for the proto, there shouldn't be an issue with the payment processor. Um, the account service tests, integration tests should still pass. Uh, it would be the tests that are uh, running for the payment processor that would fail. So they would essentially be responsible for that. And if you want to run an integration test for accounts or billing uh, or payment processor, essentially, you would just all import like uh, the same uh, test package that gets generated from, let's say, there are two services calling the billing uh, service. They would both uh, import the uh, billing service uh, testing package for, for the mocks and that way you don't have to like check those into every single service. It doesn't get duplicated. Okay. So this one? <laughs> yeah. Sure. Okay. Well, what do you use to make the code scrolling work in your slide? It's just an animation. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, next one. So how does the account service know that you should talk to the mocks? So when you initialize the account service, you would start it the same way. You don't start the payment processor or the billing service. Uh, the test driver essentially starts the uh, uh, payment processor and billing um, services. Those services are essentially mocks running as GoRoutines with the same ports. And then you would essentially use, let's say the uh, test driver is running on 10.10.10.10. Uh, .10 .10 .10 .10 then the account service will essentially uh, start with the clients connecting to 10.10.10.10, um, .10 whatever the port is, for the uh, payment processor or the billing uh, service. Um, yeah, it, it, you essentially treat the mocks as the stand-ins, but you're communicating to the mocks via the channels. Okay. Yeah, that's a good one. Whose work is it, tester or developer? Uh, I'm not entirely sure what that means by that question, but for generating the mocks, that would be up to the developer, essentially. Uh, you could have um, the developer of other services to validate, uh, uh, you, use those mocks, essentially, but uh, I think the integration test is low enough level where you would want developers like writing these tests. It's all Go code, and um, you just have to be responsible for writing uh, or checking in the mocks for your service for the one that you're developing, that's it. Okay. 